players that can play the game, and we've got other guys that are fitting into the roles, and you know that's what the game is about. Putting five guys on the floor that understand, you know, what each of them can bring to the table. We have a good chemistry against the team. I mean, we all know our tendencies and what we're capable of doing, and we all do what we know we can do and not try to do any more than that. Each player knowing his role has something to do with it, but experience also plays a major part in the Cardinals' impressive start. While considering their 12 and 0, number one in the state in Division One, you would think the Final Lack Cardinals would be happy being kings of the mountain. We just hope that our kids. You know, respect all and fear none and understand that there is a target on our back. Uh, we've been playing with a target uh, other years. We've won our conference, I think, eight of the last ten years. So that, you know, Fond du Lac has been a program that other teams have been gunning for. Number one ranking doesn't mean much. We, you know, we got to come out every day and practice, work a little harder, just uh, back the number one ranking up, but it doesn't mean too much. That number one ranking means nothing to this team because they know it's not where you stand at midseason, it's where you finish. I don't want you to just come out here and stay here. In Fond du Lac, Lynn Felton, Fox 11 Sports. That's exactly it. Um, number one with halfway to go is, yeah. is nice, but number one at the end of the season is a lot better. And a whole bunch of area teams doing well this year. Indeed. All right. Thank you, Thomas, very much. We want to check. Divided by two is 77%. 61%. Okay, rebounds. At Fond du Lac for 34. And Calcana for 19. And turnovers, Fond du Lac with 11. Calcana with, with uh, 13. I got a correction there, 18 of 24. Fondi was 18 of 24. For 75%. Sorry about that. Uh, Travis Diener finished with 26. Drake Diener finished with 23. Uh, should we put... Joe Michaels had eight, Ryan Lloyd seven, and Lee Greshel seven. That's that's good. Uh, for Kakona, Ryan Bowers had 20. Guys, yes. go and tell Matthew you can turn around. I don't know where he is. He's around here. Ah, shit. Oh, hold on. Matt. Oh, we got him. Tell him he can tear down. He can tear down. Okay, got him. Uh, Bowers. Ryan Bowers finished with 24, and Borkart finished with 20. 20 points in the second half. It is. Okay, you guys ready? Yep, we're ready. It's all yours. Your final score, 70. I don't even have it. 77-61. Fondi moves up to 10-0 in conference and 12-0 overall. And Kakana drops to 5-5, 7-5 overall. Really, we saw two different Fondi teams here, Bob. In the first half, they came out and looked invincible. In the second half, they were playing on their heels all half. Yes, I'm quite quite certain that if uh, you would have told Coach Diener before this game that he would get a 16-point win, that he would be uh, very, very pleased. But the way this win came about, it uh, probably doesn't please him quite as much. Uh, can't really put my finger on what happened. Uh, defensively, we got a bit slow. And, and to their credit, Borcher and Bowers hit some very difficult shots. Uh, that's the type of players they are. They're very explosive. 28 points. Cordell dropped 28. A very good all-around basketball game. I think what Cordell is struggling with is when to really try to score points as opposed to passing the ball around. Obviously, he's doing well at 11 and a half points per game. Cordell and Brian Wardle form a very solid one-two backcourt punch for the Marquette Golden Eagles. For St. Louis, they've won four of five. Any discussion of St. Louis this season must begin with Maurice Jeffers. He's the leading scorer, their top rebounder, and a pretty good defender as well. And he's a very tough customer, has a lot of experience, 
and St. Louis's big three really play well together and they do a good job of getting into the offensive flow. Justin Tatum had 18 in an overtime win over Cincinnati last Saturday afternoon and Marquis Perry is their point guard the guy that really makes them go. George and I will be back in a moment to take a look at some of the keys in tonight's game right after this. Marquette Golden Eagles basketball on MSC is being brought to you by Miller Genuine Craft, the Wisconsin Lottery, Hardee's, Pottawatomie Bingo and Casino, Sport Medicine Performance Center, Oneida Bingo and Casino, Menards. You don't have to play to win. I say, you don't have to play to win. It's a natural fact. You get so much back. You don't have to play to win. Since 1988, your Wisconsin lottery has returned over $1.5 billion to property tax relief. Now that's a chunk of change. It's a natural fact. You get so much back. You don't have to play to win. The Ford Taurus is built to protect you, all of you. Dual stage airbags protect your head and torso. Adjustable pedals mean more space for your legs, but it's Taurus's new styling that protects the most fragile part of the human anatomy, the ego. And while it's bold redesign protects your image, a thousand cash back or 09 APR will do wonders for your self-esteem. Ford Taurus, with looks that save face and a deal that saves you cash. Drive one at your local Ford store. Home theater. Surround sound. Five channel digital audio. The total movie going experience right in your own home. Difficult to do? No. Expensive? No. Fun to have? Without a doubt. And American brings home theater home to you better than anyone with dozens of complete surround sound systems on display to choose from. Top brand Sony, Pioneer, Yamaha, Polk Audio, Klipsch, Bose, Kenwood, Denon. And now many include down no interest till 2003. That's right, 2003. And American. We're back at the Savage Center moments before Marquette takes on St. Louis. These two teams have really developed a pretty keen rivalry over the last several seasons. A year ago, for example, they split the two games with the home team winning each time. Here in St. Louis, in late January, the Billikens prevailed. Justin Love had 18. It was a 15-point win for St. Louis. Ryan Wardle scored two of his 24 on that move. Marquette, earlier in January, had beaten St. Louis relatively easily up in Milwaukee. George, what are some of the keys in tonight's game? Marquette must play some pretty good post defense tonight. The guards usually dictate the scoring for St. Louis. Marquette has to have balance scoring on the other hand. They probably need at least three people in double figures, and they have to have a higher shooting percentage. These games are usually knockdown drag them outs, Pat. I'm looking forward to it, George. We could be in for a real treat as Marquette takes on St. Louis, and it's coming up next. I got a taste in mind. What's new at Hardee's? The Frisco Mushroom Melt. Loaded with melting Swiss cheese, bacon, and hot mushrooms in a savory sauce. All stacked up on our famous grilled Frisco sourdough bread. So rich, so satisfying, and only Hardee's has it. Come on and get it. You're super satisfied. Try the brand new taste of Hardee's super satisfying Frisco Mushroom Melt. Here for a limited time. Oneida Casino presents Cheap Trick. Rock in the house with chart toppers like Surrender, I Want You to Want Me, Dream Police, and more. Sunday, March 4th at 8.30 p.m. in the Radisson Iroquois Complex. Tickets $20. On sale now at the casino and all ticket star outlets. Hell, Wisconsin! Keep on rocking with Cheap Trick at Oneida Casino, Green Bay. This year, this year. MSC is the new place to turn for everything that's going on in the world of NASCAR. 
Weeknights, it's totally NASCAR at 6. Your exclusive all-access garage pass. Sundays start off with NASCAR this morning at 9.30. The best pre-race tailgate party this side of Talladega. And race day wraps up with NASCAR Victory Lane at 9. A full recap of all the day's action. NASCAR on MSC. Your head heaven just got a little sweeter. Time to take a look at the starting lineups for tonight's game as Marquette takes on St. Louis in Conference USA college basketball action. For the Marquette Golden Eagles, Blankson, Namaka, Miller, Henry, and Wardle. Tom Crean, the head coach in his second year, 23 and 21. The St. Louis Billikens under Lorenzo Romar will start with Tatum, Sloan, and Heinrich up front, Jeffers and Perry in the backcourt. In the Menard series history, Marquette leads 23 wins to 21. They split a year ago with the home team winning each time. With George Thompson, Pat Hughes, thanks for joining us. We're all set to go. George, what tempo, what style of a game are you looking for tonight? It'll probably be a grinder. No question about it, Pat. These two teams usually play those types of games. Controlled by John Miller of Marquette, it goes to a Loma Namica. So you're looking for a low scoring game. Kind of a low scoring, very physical thing. Here's Brian Wardle. He's been hobbled by a bad ankle in the last couple of days. We'll watch to see what his mobility is tonight. Namica bounce pass to Miller. Blocked. Beautiful block by Sloan. Here comes St. Louis. Might have been Tatum that got a hand on that block. It looked nice. like Miller was open. He was. Nice penetration by Namaco with a good find. Miller couldn't cash. This is Marquis Perry. Chris Sloan on top. He's a freshman. This is the main man, Maurice Jeffers. Tatum to Sloan. Baseline left. Inside to Heinrich. Namaco blocked it. Namaco blocks it again and gets the rebound. What an effort by Aloma Namaco. Cordell Henry fires away. In and out. Rebound to Jeffers. Well, apparently they're letting them play early, Pat. A lot of contact underneath, and uh, they're calling the same way on both sides of the timeline early. St. Louis 11 and 7 overall. Forcing a jumper and missing was Jeffers. Rebound to Cordell Henry. Here comes Marquette. No score. We've played a minute and a half in St. Louis at the beautiful Savas Center. This place holds 20,000. We have about 10 to 12,000 on hand tonight. Brian Wardle has not yet put up a shot. He's the leading scorer for Marquette. Out to Namaka for a three. Over and off. Blanks in the rebound, lost it. It should be a Marquette ball. Nope. They say Blankson lost it out of bounds. Give it to St. Louis. Both teams getting some pretty good looks at it early. Neither team converting after about two minutes of play. There's old Tom Crean there. Tom Crean and Lorenzo Romar are two of the brightest young coaches on the college basketball scene, Pat. Absolutely, and they've both done a great job with their clubs so far this season. Neither team has scored. We've played over two minutes. Heinrich. Too hard. Rebound to Miller. Well, you predicted a low-scoring game, George. Well, we've got a ways to go yet, but these tend to be grinders. Wardle jump pass to Henry. Cordell, the leading playmaker. Miller a high post. Back door to Henry. Knocked away by Perry. And it's off of St. Louis, it'll be a Marquette ball. Good idea. Good recovery by St. Louis. Cordell Henry going back door. You have to go back door to alleviate that overplay. Here's a foul on St. Louis. Neither team has hit from the field. The officials tonight, Bob Sitov, Kerry Sitton, and Kelly Self. Wordle to inbound for Marquette. No score. Namaka. There you go. Cleans in and scores 2 nothing. 
Namika has done a real good job in the last five or six games of pushing the ball to the basket. Foul on uh, Miller of Marquette. Here's Namika's move again, George. Namika steps through, almost a double team, but gets himself to the middle of the floor. Nice head and shoulders fake. Good soft release. And it's 2-0 Marquette. That was a common foul on John Miller of the Golden Eagles. St. Louis yet to score. We've played three minutes. Open a Sloan. Tie game. Chris Sloan, a freshman out of St. Peter's, Missouri, ties the game at two. Wardle has not yet shot. Now he has. Off the back rim, Tatum, the weak side rebound. Marquis Perry knocked away by Henry. Bodies on the floor. They tie themselves up. The possession arrow pointing toward the St. Louis goal. Both teams playing a heap of defense. Henry almost coming up with the theft that time. Good to see guys going down on the floor after those loose balls. St. Louis ball right of the basket baseline. Perry comes into Sloan. Game tied 2-2. Two -two. Maurice Jeffers. This ball is out of bounds. Turnover, give it back to Marquette. The defense is good, but neither offense real sharp at the outset. All right, and that's one of the things we talked about at the top, one of the keys Marquette really needed to get some balanced scoring and shoot a high percentage from the floor this evening. John Harris has checked in for Marquette. We'll get you a TV timeout here in just a moment. Namaka takes it hard to the basket again. Namaka doing a great job the last five or six games of really taking those hard dives to the hoop. He's got a pretty quick first step, doesn't he, George? Yes, Offensive he does. foul here. Go ahead. Offensive foul there, Pat, but uh, Namaka really creates problems for the big forward or for the small forward. We've got a timeout. Long way to go, but Marquette off to a good start. Oh, yeah, that's a first down. Woo! Way to read the D. Yeah. That's what I'm talking All about. Right. Can't get enough football? Grab a Miller Lite and any time is Miller time. Who's calling these plays? Put in a backup! The Super Bowl's coming. Make room for Miller Lite inflatable chairs. Enter to win them wherever you buy Miller Lite or at SuperBowl.com. Oh! Guys, there's a couch just like mine downstairs. Ernie von Schledorn gives you great selection at three convenient locations. Check out the huge inventory of Ford and Mercury vehicles in Lomira. EVS GM in Mayville carries Pontiac, Cadillac, Chevrolet, and Oldsmobile. Get a great deal on Dodge, Chrysler, Plymouth, and Jeep at the Mayville West location. Spectacular savings on all the new car and truck lines and quality used vehicles. The EVS deal is the best deal for you. Just minutes away. Ernie von Schledorn. The friendly car dealer gives you much more. Some folks think wireless is where technology is headed. The thing is, even wireless stuff has to connect somewhere. When you have cable from Charter, you're already connected to all the things you enjoy on your TV or PC. And nothing's faster or more reliable. So there you go. The future of technology? You're looking at it. Charter Communications, welcome to the wired world. Call today and see what Charter can offer you. Coming up on Valentine's Day night, February 14th, the Wednesday Marquette at UAB. Birmingham, a 7 o'clock game. Make sure to get your wife some flowers and a nice card before we leave for that trip now, George. Yeah, we better build up a few points before we go, Pat. <laughs> With George Thompson, Pat Hughes in St. Louis, 4-2, to two, a low-scoring game. After the first four minutes, a Loma Namaka with a couple of driving baskets for Marquette. 
St. Louis one of five, and Marquette two of six, so neither team really scorching the net. Namaka with his third basket, and Marquette leads by four. See, that's there all night. Namaka presents a lot of problems for St. Louis's defense. Sloan outside, baseline left to Jeffers against Blankson. Perry forced it, missed it. Rebound to Blankson. Good rebound. MU doing a good job of limiting the Billikens to one shot. Wardle called for traveling. Sometimes guys get away with that final jump stop, and other times they get called for traveling. Well, it's usually in the NBA when they get away with it. Mm -hmm. Marquette's lead is 6-2. St. Louis with the ball. Marquis Perry over to Jeffers, the top scorer and the top rebounder, Jeffers. Heinrich inside. He is fouled on the shot. The shot not close, but a foul from behind. I think Wardle got whistled for the personal. Wardle trying to roll down and help defensively. Yes, got him on the arm. And it's usually the helper on defense that gets ticketed with the foul. Why is that, George? Because they're coming over trying to compensate. They're trying to give their teammates some help, and they generally get into an awkward or difficult position. Heinrich, 68% from the free throw this season, from the line this season, makes one of two. The lead 6-3 Marquette. Marquette already with one road win at DePaul. Here's Namaka. Henry, pull up and fire. Rebound to Perry. Perry's got speed ahead to Jeffers for the layup. Beautiful. Nice bust out by St. Louis that time. Put Marquette a tad flat-footed getting back on defense. Jeffers is one of those gliders, George. He's deceptively fast, covers a lot of real estate with every step. Harris passed to Wardle inside. Henry drills a three-pointer for Marquette. M.U. with some real good ball movement early. Jeffers comes right back and makes it in. Jeffers yeah. averaging almost 16 points per game, Pat, so he can fill it up. Now the pace picking up considerably. Wardle fires. Off the rim, rebound to St. Louis. The Marquette lead is 9-7. Both offenses getting a lot more rhythm here in the last minute or two. Terry Sanders coming in for Marquette, replacing Brian Wardle. Again, he's got a bad ankle. As well as Brian Baroni in the game now. We affectionately call him the energizer. He really gets things going, both offensively and defensively. St. Louis trails by two. Jeffers fades away and misses. That's a Marquette ball. Good help defensively by Harris that time. Harris made Jeffers fade away. And that probably took away from the accuracy of the shot, but nice team defense that time. Marquette with the ball, leading by two, nine to seven. Henry gets a pick from Namaka. Sanders pass knocked away, stolen by St. Louis. Up court to Sloan. Now they set up their offense. Here's a steal by Sanders. Good overplay by Terry. Gets the pass back. Sanders misses a bank shot. Baroni has the loose ball. Baroni getting a lot more playing time and conference play. He's going to show a lot more confidence in the shot as well, Patrick. Henry, it looked like he forced it, but he got it. Cordell shoots the ball very well with time running down on the clock because he can elevate quickly and has some very explosive speed as we talked about. 
Cordell Henry with five early points. Marquette leads by four. Tatum had it knocked away out of bounds. The ball belongs to Marquette. Marquette playing very tough defense in the early going. We've got a timeout in St. Louis. 11.39 to play in the half. Marquette leads by four. I got a taste in mind. What's new at Hardee's? The Frisco Mushroom Melt. Loaded with melting Swiss cheese, bacon, and hot mushrooms in a savory sauce. All stacked up on our famous grilled Frisco sourdough bread. So rich, so satisfying, and only Hardee's has it. Come on and get it. It's super satisfying. Try the brand new taste of Hardee's super satisfying Frisco Mushroom Melt. Here for a limited time. Heating bills are going through the roof. Save energy and money with the area's largest selection of Johns Manville fiberglass insulation from Menards for walls, attics, and crawl spaces. On sale now. Plus, get truckload savings on Performance Birdseed. A 20-pound bag of country mix is just $2.89. 20 pounds of sunflower seed is $3.99. Stock up with savings from Menards. Save big money at Menards. I like the Moolah games. The ones with the cows. I like the card games. Personally, I like the sports games. The lottery games can instantly get you on TV. It's fun to scratch them off. There's always a new game to play. Uh, I like that Ray Charles game. Presenting the new $2 instant scratch game from the Wisconsin Lottery. Ray Charles, top prize $25,000. It's not bad just for scratching. Coming up this Sunday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, Marquette at St. Louis Women's College Basketball, right here on MSC, your Golden Eagles connection. We understand that Louisville has jumped out to a 15 to 6 lead at Cincinnati. It's early in that game, but boy, would that be an upset. Louisville struggling, trying to win at Cincinnati, something very few teams have been able to do in the last decade. Marquette shooting 42%, St. Louis 33 early in this one. Here's a pass by Peroni off the hand of Harris out of bounds. Give it back to St. Louis. High risk pass that time by Bryant. Not enough angle to get that one in successfully to Harris. Just over 11 minutes to play in the half. Marquette 11, St. Louis 7. Tatum muscles it up too hard. Rebound to Brian Wardle. He was two feet from the basket and threw it four feet. <laughs> Overcompensated a little. <laughs> Inside is Harris. Harris wants to shoot. Does, but he's traveling first. Marquette has to stay active, however, feeding the post. They have to let Harris and Sanders get some touches offensively. It changes everything when the defense has to react, roll down, and try and double-team the post. Both teams with four turnovers. Marquette's lead is four. Perry drills a three. Marquis Perry, a 6-1 sophomore out of Chicago, makes it a one-point Marquette lead. Second leading score on the team at 11 points per game. Marquette with a three-guard lineup now with Baroni, Henry, and Wardle. Sanders out to Baroni. Fouled on the dribble by Josh Fisher. Good things have been happening off of the dribble penetration for Marquette this evening. And Namika started it all by really going to the whole heart and coming away with some real positive results. Speaking of Namika, Namika and Merritt into the contest now for uh, Harris and Sanders. Sanders. Brian Baroni to make the inbound pass, left of the basket baseline. Neither team in real serious foul trouble. Wardle drills a three. Nothing but strings from 21 feet. Brian running a nice crisp pattern on the perimeter that time. Brown almost traveled. Here's Diener drilling a three. 
Drew Diener makes a three, and he's fouled by Wardle on the play. Well, we might have our first opportunity for a four-point play this season. Brian Wardle committing a foul way outside. It swung back to the corner. Wardle closed quickly, a little out of control. Possibility of a four-point play. Diener, a sophomore from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. He's their top long range shooter, and indeed a rare four point play ties the game at 14. Wardle will have a seat. He is not 100% from all appearances, George. Well, Brian's struggling right now, and uh, Marquette really needing to stay into this thing and not give St. Louis their head and their opportunity to get this crowd in it. Crowd pretty silent so far. They have not had a whole lot to cheer about. Marquette has uh, trailed at halftime in the last seven straight games. Yamaka aggressively missing, getting his own rebound, and he's foul on the way back up. Yamaka has to continue to go to the basket until they figure out a way to stop him. Obviously, he causes problems for all of the frontline players in one form or another, either speed, quickness, or just his ability to dribble penetrate. He's up on the line. He had a brilliant game against Charlotte the other day with 15 points and a career-high 14 rebounds. Swishes number one. Perhaps the most versatile player that Marquette has, a Loma Namaka. He's been very modest with the threes this year, but really has started to come on, taking the ball to the rack. And Marquette leads by two. St. Louis with the ball. Perry pull up and fire. Too hard. Long rebound to Baroni. Here comes Marquette. Harris pass kicked away by Bonyak. Fresh 35 for MU. Side out of bounds. Lorenzo Romar, former NBA player, four plus years with Golden State and Milwaukee. He's a good little player, left hander. Really a nice person, too. Lorenzo led St. Louis into the NCAA tournament a year ago in his first season as the head coach. They were the number nine seed in the tournament, and they won four in a row to win the conference tournament. Here's Merritt's follow-up shot, no good, but Merritt will be on the line for two. And you doing a nice job of getting some second-chance opportunities. Everyone going to the basket with authority. Marquette going to the hoop, block, and Merritt comes away with a second chance and then gets himself to the line for two free ones. George, if Marquette can score more inside points in the final 10 or 15 games of the year, it will really take a load off of guys like Wardle and Henry and, and all the other outside players. Yeah, and, and Merritt needs to come on. Uh, Merritt scores, he's about the fourth leading scorer in the conference among centers. And he has a good all-around offensive game, but he, uh, he has to be a little more consistent with it. Merritt made one, missed one. Marquette's lead is three. We have seven, or rather eight and a half minutes to play first half. Here's a foul before the shot. Well, that was uh, quick on quicker. Those two guys, a lot of speed. And they pretty much X each other out as far as speed is concerned. I wouldn't want to guard either one of them. Perry out front. He's recovered from a dislocated ankle a year ago. Marquis Perry. Here's Josh Fisher. He's a good playmaker coming off the bench with over 50 assists. Inside Bonyak. Misses the little finger roll. After a good move, he missed. The two-footer. Marquette's lead is three. Got to get a better angle, Cordell. Namaka again. 
Rebound to Harris. Forced it, but he was fouled. I like the way Marquette is getting second chances. Marquette attacking the basket very aggressively and really doing a good job if the first shot is missed at getting a second one. Harris just all out want to just to come up with that uh, offensive rebound. John averaging six. He's a good guy coming in off the bench for the Golden Eagles. First one bounces off. John, 32% from the foul line this season, nine out of 28. Shooting better from there of late. Made two in a row last game. Good tip out by Merritt. So Marquette with a fresh 35, new possession. They lead by three. Little plays like that are big in a game. Harris, left hand. Can't get it to fall. St. Louis with the ball, down by three. Fisher to Bonyak for the easy basket. Good pass. First easy basket of the evening for St. Louis. Marquette playing some pretty stingy defense. St. Louis beat Cincinnati in overtime right here last Saturday. They lost in overtime at Memphis last Thursday. So they've played a lot of nail biters lately. So has Marquette. Marquette's played nine games this season, decided by five points or less. Henry all the way. Harris follow up no good. Rebound foul against Marquette. John Harris missing the gimme and complicating things. I don't know whether the foul was awarded to Harris or not, but for sure we wouldn't be talking about St. Louis possession had the layup gone in. Six and a half minutes to play in the half. Marquette leads by one, and we're coming right back. Good presentation. But pricing's very important to us. We need to be cautious. This is my sale, my responsibility. And my two-way from Metrocall. Glad I got it. It's a competitive world right down My two-way from Metrocall. The handheld for the highly mobile. That's me. Badger State Winter Games, taking place in Wausau and throughout Wisconsin. Imagine the possibilities. No matter what your level, Badger State Winter Games, February 2nd through the 4th. Information and handbooks are available from any American Family Insurance agent, sponsored in part by Charter Communications and MSC. Ernie von Schledorn gives you great selection at three convenient locations. Check out the huge inventory of Ford and Mercury vehicles in Lomira. EVS, GM, and Mayville carries Pontiac, Cadillac, Chevrolet, and Oldsmobile. Get a great deal on Dodge, Chrysler, Plymouth, and Jeep at the Mayville West location. Spectacular savings on all the new car and truck lines and quality used vehicles. The EVS deal is the best deal for you. Just minutes away. Ernie von Schledorn. The friendly car dealer gives you much more. The Milwaukee Bucks take on Denver right here on MSC on Wednesday, January 31st. That's one week from tonight at 7 o'clock on MSC, your ultimate sports connection. St. Louis, 6 of 15, 40% here. Pat at the 635 mark. Marquette, 6 of 19, 31%. It's been a low scoring battle, sort of what you predicted, George. Each team struggling from the field. Six and a half minutes to play with George Thompson, the all-time leading scorer at Marquette. It's Pat Hughes from St. Louis. We thank you for joining us. Jeffers, we 
weaving his way through traffic, fouled on the shot by Greg Clausen. Clausen trying to get over, trying to establish that position to take the charge, was not quite set. Jeffers a real load to guard one on one. He's very quick. Good moves. Had a 27 point game against Louisville back on January 6th. He's a senior out of Moralton, Arkansas. Shoots about 45% from the field. Does a nice job from the charity stripe at about 76%. And that gives St. Louis their first lead of the night. 18 to 17. Marquette without their leading scorer, Brian Wardle. Brian with two fouls is on the bench. Here's Clausen. Inside Blackson scores to give Marquette the lead. Marquette bound and determined to take it down low, and they've been very successful. Jeffers fouled on the way up. That's the second time that Jeffers, after a Marquette basket, has hustled down to get into position to put up a quick shot. Right, and they got the ball up the court via the pass rather than the dribble, which is always quicker. Jeffers will shoot two. Team fouls, that's seven against Marquette, so free throws on every foul between now and the end of the half. Bonyak out, Heinrich in for St. Lou. The game tied at 19. The beautiful Savas Center in St. Louis. John Miller in for Marquette. Replacing Greg Clausen. Let's see if Marquette continues to pound it inside. Open is Harris. Traveling before he can put up a shot. He was wide open. Forgot to dribble. It's back to that point, though, Pat. They've got to get confidence in their games, and the only way that happens is by getting enough touches in the game. Under game conditions. McLean. Blankson got a hand on it. That's a Marquette ball. Great defense by Odarte Blankson. All out hustle that time by Blankson. Both teams substituting very freely. Could have just as easily been a charge, but Blankson disrupts the pass, and ultimately Marquette ends up with the basketball. Marquette down by one. Not a lot of movement away from the ball at the moment for Marquette. Namaka. Baroni's pass inside to Miller and a jump ball. The possession arrow favors Marquette, so they'll keep it. Again, Wardle, their top scorer, is out, and the offense does not have quite the rhythm that they would like right now. Still another tough entry pass, so Marquette's got to get better spacing. Baroni fires with the shot clock down to three, an off-balance foul line jumper gives Marquette the lead. Energizes confidence starting to grow offensively, which will be another plus for Marquette in the backcourt. They can no longer disregard Brian back there. Fisher fires, gets. Josh Fisher noted for his passing. Knocking down a jumper to give St. Louis the one-point lead. Namaka to Miller traveling on Namaka. Well, the question becomes, why did he travel like that? A lot of contact there. Foul could have just as easily been called, especially down low. 
Looks nice like on the road, Pat. Yeah, it looked like he got rid of the ball legally to me. But... Here's Jeffers, top of the key. St. Louis leads by one. Brown straight away. Rebound foul on St. Louis. We go the other way. Marquette, for the most part, doing a good job on the defensive glass, blocking off. That's been an area that I know Tom Crean and his coaching staff have been very concerned about, not giving up as many second chance shots. And what also has to happen is when Coach Crean does go to the bench, like with a Sanders coming in now, and like with a Baroni, they have to be able to make a dent in the game right away. There cannot be any drop off, and he's counting on certain guys in the rotation to come in and fill those voids. Well, Darte Blankson will have one and one. 52% free throw shooter clanks the first. St. Louis leads by one with the ball. Three and a half minutes to play in the half. It's a grinder. Heinrich inside. Traveling. He's traveling, no basket. We got a timeout. Three minutes to play in the half. Marquette trails by one. We'll be right back. Milwaukee has long been recognized for its distinctive metal sculpture, and this piece is no exception. But as impressive as this new display is, it's just the entrance of the new Potawatomi Bingo Casino. Potawatomi Bingo Casino. At American, hundreds of items include no money down, no interest till 2003. Oh, you mean 2002. No money down, no interest till 2002. No, I mean 2003. American now makes it easier than ever to pay for your new purchase. So you not only get the low market price. Guaranteed. But you also put no money down and you have all the way till the year 2003 to pay for it with absolutely no interest? Pretty cool, huh? It can't be. It can. No money down, no interest till 2003 at American. An interview at halftime with Al Frizzone, Marquette Assistant Athletic Director. We'll take a look at some of the highlights and some of the numbers. George Thompson, in a moment or two, is going to hustle on over and interview Lorenzo Romar, the St. Louis head coach, as he leaves the floor. 22-21, St. Louis leads by one. Cordell Henry for Marquette. Cordell with five points. Now Baroni a three, partially blocked. Heinrich with the ball. Two and a half minutes to play first half. The Billikens trying to move into first place in the American division. McLean, no good. Rebound to Marquette's Henry. St. Louis is not a great outside shooting team. Turnover suffered by Marquette. Marquette's offense getting a tad illiquid here the last few times down the floor. They really need to protect the basketball and continue to get those high percentage shots that we saw from them earlier. Thinking of St. Louis offense, George, I can imagine a lot of uh, coaches of their opposing team saying, let's pack it in, make them beat us from the outside. 
because they don't have a lot of great outside shooters. You're, you're correct, Pat, and, and that's what you what you do when you when you play the percentages like that. John Harris in on the line, Marquis Perry. Perry will have one and one. He's got number one. Marquis on the line this season, a 71% free throw shooter. The St. Louis lead is two. St. Louis, seven of eight from the line. Make it eight of nine. The lead is three for the Billikens. Full court press now against Marquette. Baroni a three on two. Can they take advantage? Baroni scores on a tough lean in. Nice shot by Brian Baroni. Marquette down by only one. Harry a quick jumper. Rebound to Marquette's Henry and a defensive foul by Floyd McLean. He tried to draw the charge, but it was ruled a blocking foul, and we walked to the other end. Here it is again. Very a quick jumper. Miller and Heinrich battled for it. It was taken by Henry as he started to dribble. McLean tried to draw the charge and was called for the defensive block. So Cordell at the line for one and one with a chance to give Marquette the lead. Cordell netting the first to tie the game at 24. Coming off of uh, a career high 28 point game against Charlotte last Saturday. You can see his season numbers. Henry misses. Tie game, a minute and a half to play, first half. Here is Sloan to Heinrich. And to Jeffers, foul inside, defense. They whistled uh, a Loma Namaka for the foul that time, right in the middle of the lane. Perhaps holding somebody, trying to cut through. Perry has a one and one. It's team foul number nine on Marquette. Both teams with nine team fouls. Now the officials uh, step in. Kerry Sitton, Kelly Self, and Bob Sidoff. They tell the guys to settle down, put things under control. Two-point lead for St. Louis. Coming up on the final minute, first half. Marquette had a six-point lead early. Harris, good pass to Miller. Miller is traveling. The pass seemed to surprise him a little bit. He shuffled the feet before he could put it up on the glass. What a nice pass by Harris. Yep, John did walk. Give it back to St. Lou. Under a minute to play. Steal by Marquette's Cordell Henry. Two on three. Cordell all the way. Ah, tough shot, no good. Rebound, St. Louis Sloan. We're down to 30 seconds. Outside is Jeffers. Now St. Louis may go for the final shot of the half. They will. Here's Sloan. We're down to 15 seconds. You're going to see some movement right about now. Jeffers to the foul line. Makes the jumper with five seconds. Henry with a desperation heave from 40. No good in the half ends. For the eighth straight game, Marquette is trailing at halftime. The score, 28-24.
St. Louis. In just a moment, George Thompson is going to be visiting with St. Louis head coach Lorenzo Romar. St. Louis scoring the final four points of the half to take the lead at intermission. Let's go to George with Lorenzo Romar. George. Right here, man. How you doing, man? Good. We, we're, here with, we're here with Lorenzo Romar, head coach, former Milwaukee Buck. Things go according to plan in the first half, coach. Well, we're up four, so you like that part of it. Uh, we've got to do a little bit of better job offensively at times running our stuff. Marquette's an awfully good defensive team, and Tom Crean and his staff does a great job, and you have to concentrate when you're playing against those guys and be detailed or you won't score. What do you have to do coming back in the second half to widen the lead? Well, we got to continue to guard, and we got to box out. That was probably the poorest thing we did that half. They're an aggressive offensive rebounding team, and we got to keep them off the board. Okay, Coach, thanks for your time. Okay, thank you. Back to you, Pat. George, thanks very much. It is halftime. We'll be back with our halftime show in just a moment. St. Louis leads by four at intermission. 13 weeks, 13 drawings, many winners, but only one grand champion. Oneida Casino's Blackjack 13 survived. In this game, there's no alliances, no challenges, and no tribal council. Just you and the cards. Hard 13s earn entries into weekly drawings for survival gear. 13 winners each week qualify for prize drawings. 13 trips for two to Laughlin, Nevada, plus $500 cash, or a Jeep Wrangler and cash prizes. Blackjack 13, January 30th through April 24th, Oneida Casino, Green Bay. Survive it. Just one more strike. <laughs> yeah! Oh, hey guys, I just rolled a perfect game! No! <laughs> sure you did. No, I just erased it! <laughs> just like your wife's a supermodel. <laughs> she <laughs> is! My favorite. How you got your wireless phone for free? <laughs> I did! Right now, you can get a phone for free after a $50 mail-in rebate with a new two-year service agreement and included long distance from your home area from Verizon Wireless. Hello? When are you coming home? Because I really miss you. Enjoy down-home cooking during Perkins Country Cooking Days. Woo! It's a great time to try Perkins' new country fried steak and eggs for the down-home taste of our new chicken fried chicken dinner. Just wait till you taste Perkins smoked ham or grilled pork chops. Come on into Country Cooking Days and enjoy the great value starting at just $5.99. All perfectly prepared by Perkins. Perkins, always something fresh and new. Prince Play. Three and one. This is a ball they would love to win here tonight. Up next for Marquette, they go home on Saturday at one o'clock in the afternoon. They play Tulane at the Bradley Center. Tulane struggling, winless in conference play. So certainly that's a game that Marquette should win, to be very honest about it. But first things first, they are trying to get past a very tough St. Louis club here at the Savas Center. Marquette down at half for the eighth straight game. Now that's the bad news. The good news is that they have outscored their opponents in the second half in seven of the last eight games. So they've really been a second half team. And obviously that's what they are hoping to be again tonight. One of the things though, Pat, you do not like to get too far behind on the road. So Marquette needs to really come back out and establish that aggressiveness that we saw early in the first half. Absolutely. Marquette on the floor defensively. St. Louis with the ball, and away we go. Second half. The Billikens lead by four. Marquis Perry, the point guard, over to Maurice Jeffers. Maurice had ten points in the first half. Sloan pass to Tatum. He is fouled on the way to the bucket. Good pass by Sloan. Billikens really setting that play up, taking their time. It was obvious that they were looking to punch it down low and create a situation there. And they got exactly what they wanted out of it. Tatum gets himself to the line for two free ones. He's a big kid, 235 pounds, 6'7". He's a native of St. Louis. Scored a career-high 18 against Cincinnati in that overtime win last Saturday. Well, I bet you a lot of them weren't from the free throw line, Pat, because he only shoots 55% from here. He does make one of two. 
Now Marquette with their first second half possession. Namaka missed the layup after a good strong move. Rebound to St. Louis. Namaka's got to keep his head up. That's there all night. They continue to force the issue. Dude. Tatum. Tatum makes it a seven point lead for St. Louis. The very thing I was talking about, Pat, Marquette must stay in contact. Henry looking for Wardle. Now the shot clock down to 12. Wardle bottled up, has the pass knocked away out of bounds. Bryan's ankle is obviously bothering him. He's just not quite as mobile as he normally is. Tatum getting some sweet low post position. It's almost too late then defensively. Here's a Marquis Perry foul for St. Louis. Marquette ball, each team with one team foul. 18 and a half minutes to play. The lead is seven for St. Louis, the biggest lead that either team has enjoyed all night long. Big possession here for MU. Miller scores and he's fouled. Beautiful pass by Namaka. Excellent. Namaka laying that thing down nice and smooth. And Miller not winding up to jump that time. Just flowed to the basket, gets it to fall, gets a chance to score the three-point play the old-fashioned way. Excellent entry pass. Miller cannot convert the three-point play. Sloan to Tatum. Almost traveled. Rebound to Blankson. Lots of bodies on the deck. Marquette down by five. Wardle is open. He'll fire a three. Yes. Big three-pointer for Wardle, and it's a two-point game. Two big trips down the floor for MU. Very crucial to stay just a possession or two back. If you have to be behind at all. That's right. Tatum's pass stolen by Miller. Great play by Miller. He would not bite the bait, stayed in front, and was able to come up with the uh, steal. Marquetta scored five in a row. Here's Wardle, wants to shoot. Wardle scores, game tied. He's got a chance for a three-point play. So obvious when Brian Wardle is in the game, things going much more smoothly offensively. Nice dribble penetration for Brian, kept his head up, concentrated on making the basket, did not worry about the foul. Head up, kissed it smoothly. Marquette has scored eight in a row, and they lead by one. 17 minutes to play. Been all Marquette the last 90 seconds. Sloan to Tatum. Inside, away from the ball, a foul on Miller. Miller guarding Heinrich. Boy, Marquette's done a good job against Heinrich in tonight's game. Miller and Heinrich in a nice tussle down there. Last time down the floor, Miller was able to front and come up with the steal. So we're going to see that all night tonight, Pat. St. Louis down by one. And you falling back into a zone. Open a Sloan. Heinrich. 
He scores. St. Louis leads by one. Heinrich is a load, 6'11", 255 pounds. You know, he wears a size 20 shoe. Well, that's a good understanding. Wardle, yes again. See, Brian's starting to feel it now. And Marquette's such a different team when Brian is actively involved in the offense. He's got nine points in this half and 12 in the game. Marquette's lead is two. Fifteen and a half to play. We should have a timeout here momentarily. Marquette has outscored St. Louis 11 to 2 in the last few minutes, and they lead by two, and we'll be right back right after this. I got a taste in mind. Big and fresh and fine. What's new at Hardee's? The Frisco Mushroom Melt, loaded with melting Swiss cheese, bacon, and hot mushrooms in a savory sauce, all stacked up on our famous grilled Frisco sourdough bread. So rich, so satisfying, and only Hardee's has it. Come on and get it, you're super satisfied. Try the brand new taste of Hardee's super satisfying Frisco Mushroom Melt, here for a limited time. Shop the pig! Parents know if there's one thing we kids like to do, it's eat. Which is why they like Shoppy Dad Piggly Wiggly. Because they save lots of money on the things they buy. Seems like that's a big deal. But what they don't get is why we kids like the pig so much. Does it remind us of Old McDonald? Or the movie with the talking pig? Oh yeah, whatever. Super Survival Sunday 35. It's the hottest tailgate in town. Come to Oneida Casino, Sunday, January 28th. Watch the big game on three huge screens in the Radisson Iroquois Complex. Tailgate with former Packer greats and your team captains, Gary Knappel, John Mino, and Murphy in the morning. Special halftime appearance by former survivor Joel Klug. Scratch off game pieces to win. Leather Packer jackets, autographed Brett Favre prints, and more. Super Survival Sunday 35, January 28th. It's the hottest tailgate in town. Only at Oneida Casino, Green Bay. Women's college basketball coming your way tomorrow night right here on MSC Wisconsin at Illinois from Champaign on MSC your ultimate sports connection with George Thompson Pat Hughes in St. Louis Marquette on the surge of Brian Wardle's outside shooting has taken a 35-33 lead over the St. Louis Pelicans. MU trying to take the game back, shooting four of five from two-point land and two of two from beyond the three-point arc. St. Louis tough to beat at home this season, eight and one. The only team, the only visitor to come in and win here was Dayton by three. Miller called for the foul inside. John needs to try and decide whether or not he's going to front him from the giddy up. Because once Heinrich catches it down low with that big package he has, it's too late. He's probably going to get off a halfway decent shot very close to the basket. Marquette falling back into a zone trying to prevent that very thing. Clawson in for Miller for Marquette. Marquette in a zone defense at the moment. Perry to Heinrich and he scores. Game tied at 35. Miller, by the way, with four fouls for Marquette. Cordell Henry gives Marquette the lead. Some string music by Cordell, really picking his spots well tonight. Heinrich inside. And a foul on one of the Marquette Golden Eagles. Foul on Clawson, team fifth. Cordell, hard push, pulls up and elevates very quickly. Good shot. Now on the other end, 
Heinrich getting that sweet low post position again. Marquette's lead is two. St. Louis with the ball, 14-40 to play. Alley-oop, Tatum scores to tie the game. Very clear, the Billikens want to dump the ball down to Heinrich and Tatum and try to punish Marquette on the inside. Here's Brian Wardle. Langson out of control, offensive foul, no basket. Good idea, Blankson needed to probably take one less dribble, pull up as Cordell did, under control, and get off about a six-foot springer. And that is six fouls against Marquette, and we've got 14 minutes to play, and St. Louis is a pretty good free-throw shooting team. Perry, Heinrich had it chopped away. That's a Marquette ball off the hand of Tatum. Marquette fortunate that time. St. Louis had all but secured an offensive rebound. So Marquette dodges a bullet that time down the floor. Tough, tough physical contest, Pat. It really is. It's been a close one just about within two or three points throughout the game. Right now it's tied at 37. Henry. Foul line jumper is right there. Cordell Henry with a nice pump fake. And now Blankson and Josh Fisher being spoken to by the officials. Cordell, great fake. Fake was bought totally. Cordell under control, getting up a good high percentage shot. Marquette's lead is two. Namika doing a better job on Tatum. Sheffers drove and defensive foul. The Eagles thought it might be charging against Jeffers, but it was called blocking, George. Well, on the road, it's called blocking for the uh, visitors. And at home, you get to shoot those free throws. Speaking of free throws, that's the seventh team foul, so St. Louis potentially could spend a lot of time at the stripe in the final 13 minutes. St. Louis with only three team fouls. As a team shooting 67% from there. Jeffers ties the game with a couple of charity tosses. Here's a defensive foul. That's four fouls on the St. Louis Pelicans. The officials obviously are trying to keep the game under control. They know it's a, a physical battle inside. And as a result, the fouls are piling up. Well, officials have done a pretty good job of calling the game pretty evenly on both sides. Wardle a quick three. Yes! What shooting by Wardle. Marquette leads by three. Wardle with a dozen in the half and 15 in the game. Heinrich missed. No basket, no basket. That's an offensive foul on Heinrich. Ryan Wardle doing a good job. I think he ultimately ended up drawing the foul after the first miss. Yep, there it is. Good position by Brian Wardle that time. Doing it both offensively and defensively. Marquette's lead is three. You know they'd like to get it back in the hands of Wardle as hot as he is, George. Oh, he's feeling it now. Here he is. Namaka. All the way. Scores! And the lead is high. Namaka back into the flow now, and a tad offensively doing a good job on Tatum since the switch was made. 
Namaka able to front and side. Wow. Tatum scoring off the glass. A lot of contact inside. 12 minutes to play. Lots of time on the shot clock. Cordell Henry with 15. Henry, too hard. Rebound to St. Louis. Henry just a couple of inches too hard on that three. Jeffers scores. St. Louis coming with the hard push off of the miss. Wardle to the hoop. Wardle is fouled on the way to the bucket. Wardle may be shaken up. He fell hard on that right knee of his. It's a foul on St. Louis, their sixth. Boy, are we going to see a lot of free throws in the final 11 minutes of this game. Wardle appears to be okay. What happens in a game like this, Patrick, as you well know, when you decide to go to the hoop, you have to be ready to take the punishment because it's going to be meted out on both sides. Brian perhaps fouled by two Billikens that time. What the heck's a Billikin? <laughs> It's right in there with a uh, with a Hoosier, I believe, George. Here is Wardle making one. Wardle brilliant in the second half. You know, he's had three different games this season where in the second half alone, he has caught fire and scored 19 points. I think we just saw Billiken on screen. Okay? Did we really? Yeah. There he is. He broke away from the herd and, uh, here at the game. Just like you and me, he's one of those average looking guys, George. <laughs> Just over 11 minutes to play. Marquette leads by three. Ernie von Schledorn gives you great selection at three convenient locations. Check out the huge inventory of Ford and Mercury vehicles in Lomira. EVS GM in Mayville carries Pontiac, Cadillac, Chevrolet, and Oldsmobile. Get a great deal on Dodge, Chrysler, Plymouth, and Jeep at the Mayville West location. Spectacular savings on all the new car and truck lines and quality used vehicles. The EVS deal is the best deal for you. Just minutes away. Ernie von Schledorn. The friendly car dealer gives you much more. Badger State Winter Games, taking place in Wausau and throughout Wisconsin. Imagine the possibilities. No matter what your level, Badger State Winter Games, February 2nd through the 4th. Information and handbooks are available from any American Family Insurance agent, sponsored in part by Charter Communications and MSC. has come up big in the second half of both. Good in transition. Finds him for just a catch and shoot. Nice bounce. Kelly Kennedy open up her hand and she drops the ball. It's Mark in at St. Louis Women's College Basketball Sunday at 2 right here on MSC, your Golden Eagle connection. What's a Billiken? Well, a Billiken is a sprightly elf. It's a good luck charm for St. Louis University. How do they, do they travel in herds or gaggles? Or? They do now. <laughs> Let's take a look at the Wisconsin Lottery game summary, George. 46-43, Marquette leading by three. Wardle has really caught fire in the second half. You never know, both teams shooting relatively well too, Pat. Percent. Marquette shooting 50% from beyond the three point arc, and St. Louis at 40%. Get ready for a lot of free throws now in the final 11 minutes. Each team is in the bonus. With George Thompson, Pat Hughes at the Sabbath Center in St. Louis. We thank you for joining us tonight. 
It's been a good one. Marquette leads by three. Here's a foul on Marquette's Odarte Blankson. Jeffers will be on the line for one and one. Yep, St. Louis a year ago in March, four straight wins in the Conference USA tournament to win the NCAA automatic bid. You know they were the number nine seed before the tournament. How about that? That was quite an accomplishment. And again, St. Louis not picked very high in the conference this year, getting off to a pretty good start. Under Lorenzo Romar, Langson out. In is Brian Baroni, so Marquette with that three guard lineup right now. What's the effect of a three guard lineup, George? Better ball handling, more foot speed. Namaka foul. Brown chopped him on the dribble, and Namaka will shoot one and one. The crowd getting on the officials, but it is such a physical game. The officials really have to call a lot of these calls that they're making. Well, a foul is a foul is a foul whenever it happens. And the officials really trying to maintain control of this thing. One and one. Namaka missing the front end. Those really hurt. The lead for Marquette is one. Jeffers to the bucket, missing. He can really elevate, though, can't he? Brian Wardle on a scattered floor. Marquette needs to kick this thing out and reset. Every possession becoming very important. Right here at the three-quarter pole, 10 minutes left. Cordell Henry wants to shoot, does, over and off. Harris the rebound. A beautiful play by John Harris. He was off balance, but he scored anyway, and the lead is three. Marquette over St. Louis by three. Again, note the way St. Louis tries to get inside on almost every position.